there are all kinds of moments in our life. Good moments, sometimes moments we'd rather not relive. But today on Bridges, we're going to talk about life-changing moments. I'm Monica Schmelter. I want to welcome you to Bridges today. Today's hope for the journey is we're going to open up a conversation about life-changing moments. And my guest today is the president of Christian Women in Media Association, Sue McGray. She's also an author. She travels all around speaking. And we're just glad to have her here today. Sue, good to have you back on Bridges again. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, when I think just about life and moments, we love, right, those divine encounters, life-changing moments sort of what got you started on that journey of studying the Bible for life-changing moments? Well, I think that when you look back on, well, when I look back on my life, mm -hmm. I see it as kind of a tapestry of how God has woven people into my life, some for a lifetime and some only for a while. Right. But during a time of close down last year, we just, uh, like we have to do something. Mm -hmm. I can't do nothing. <laughs> so started looking through the Bible and finding stories that we're biblical stories that changed lives, not only then, but also as examples for us today. Yeah. Great examples to look back at yeah. and how we can benefit yeah. from that. They're life-changing moments then, and they're still changing lives today. They absolutely are. And uh, I think it's really neat that you did that study because I think sometimes people will say, you know, I found God, and I know what people mean when they say that, but really, He's seeking us. He finds He's us. He's finding us. And scripture says like in a barren and desolate place, he finds us. But, you know, in our perspective, we think that we found him. So you've outlined quite a few divine encounters in your book, but one of them is a story that I love. And um, it doesn't even, the Bible doesn't even give us the woman's first name. We just know her as the woman at the well. So let's talk about her life-changing moment. Well, Monica, I feel like when she went to the well to get the water, then she went when nobody else was going to be yeah. around because she was shamed. She was not supposed to interact with others. Mm -hmm. And Jesus found her and asked for living, asked him to give her a drink. And when she had an encounter with Jesus, he told her her life. You know, you've been married five times and the one you're living with, it, you're not even married. And, and, but I will give you living water that you will never thirst again. With that encounter, her life changed, but not only her life, but the life of the people back in her village. Mm -hmm. She went back and she said, this man has told me all about my life and he is the one. He is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And totally changed her life and their life too. Then yeah. they became believers. And I think, you know, as you dig into that story and, you know, I've always looked at her as kind of the first female evangelist because she goes back and she tells everybody, right? She goes right, back and tells everybody. About Jesus. And so we know that some of those people that she told had to know about her situation, right? Because it's a small town. And they probably looked down on her. Yes, and here she, she is. She wasn't as good as. Right, saying that mm -hmm. she found the Messiah. So there's that part. And then there's the part of Jesus even talking to a woman mm -hmm. at the well, which mm -hmm. he was kind of breaking every religious tradition of the day. And I think that in itself is a life-changing moment. And he didn't just happen upon her. He mm -hmm. went out of his way to find her at the well. Yeah. I think it was was intended to minister her to that day, yeah. that day. You know, and I, I've often thought of the some of the words and the things that he said to her. So we think of it like if someone said, well, I know all about you, right? You're living with this guy. You've been married <laughs> to these other people. Like that seems like it would be a hard, right? A mean conversation. Right. But yet but it, it wasn't. wasn't. It wasn't. She must have seen compassion in his eyes. Yeah. And she felt life mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. She felt hope. And I think that that's something for all of us, you know, as we share Christ with people, when we have those moments come to us, he certainly did say, go and sin no more, right? He certainly, Correct. he did Correct. say that, but he offered her hope. He offered her a different way of life. And that's the whole point of Jesus, right? Absolutely. Is that there's hope. 
that there's a different way of life. Even if the list of things that we've done seem shameful to everybody or they don't, he brings us this hope. He brings us this change. So she really had quite a divine encounter, didn't she? She absolutely did. And, and if we can just think about every day, we are prepared for the day if we can think about who, who would be put in my life? Who can I meet today? Who can I just give a smile? Who can I give an encouraging word yes. that that could make a difference for somebody else? Yes. Let alone those that, that some, a, a relationship develops out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could just be mindful every day of who we meet. Yeah. I Someone told me once, a, a guest on Bridges, and it was such a, a good kind of wisdom nugget, and I have to say I don't always do it, but their prayer was, God, put someone in my path today mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. needs you, that really needs encouragement. And that's a great prayer. And I think, like you said, being mindful, opening up our eyes, right? Instead of just running through our day. <laughs> and I everybody being an interruption. And yes. Inter yes. Mm, an interruption. Yes. We have a friend who every day would go to the garden and spend a couple of hours just saying, God, what is my assignment today? Mm. Who do you want me to go to today? And if he worked for pet, if they paid him, he used that money to build somebody else a deck or do something else. He had nothing, mm -hmm. but he came into our lives for a reason that we really, really learned from him. God, what is my assignment today? And wouldn't that be a great way to live? Absolutely. Absolutely. Such a better way to live than our to-do list or mm -hmm, checklist mm -hmm. or the pressure, the stress, the anxiety, right? Just responsibilities of adult life yeah. that can really weigh on us. Yes, you know? absolutely. I know scripture says, cast our burdens on the <laughs> Lord, right? He cares for us. And I know that and I do that. And yet the weight of life, right? The responsibilities yes. can still weigh heavy and cause me to lose the mindfulness to keep my eyes open and see who's in my path, Yes, right? Yes. Who can I be kind yes. to? Who can I have a conversation with? And I love it that Jesus' conversation, right? It just started out, would you get me some water? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wasn't that profound? Yes. It was a big teaching moment at first. No, it was an everyday topic. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes in our zeal, right? In our zest to share Christ, you know, we can say things that might be frightening to people. You know, I know someone that they were waiting out at a bus stop and it's dark and it's rainy and it's in the inner city and it's a lady and she's working a second job because she's, you know, a single mom. And uh, this guy comes into kind of the bus booth thing, sheltered area waiting for the bus. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to go if you die tonight? <laughs> and she screamed because she thought like he was going to kill was, her. <laughs> it was intimidating. Yeah. Yes, yes. He, he was able to recover. He was able to explain, no, 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 th this is what I mean, and <laughs> offered to pray with her. But I think kind of just looking at... We have to learn from those things. Yeah, like just be a little more normal. How about a drink of water, right? Yeah. How about that? Another one that you studied is a, a man that we, I would think most of us know and love from the Bible. The man after God's own heart, David. Oh, we could talk forever <laughs> oh, yeah, about we David. Yes, we, we really could. could. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What did you find as you studied David? Well, I think, you know, first of all, we found him to be brave and courageous mm -hmm. and, you know, he faced the giant. We have so many giants in our lives yes, today, we do. don't we? We do. We have so many and sometimes we're not that brave. Uh, sometimes we just shrink back and, and be a nothing. Yes. But David, um, took care of that and, and did something that the rest of the people around there would not do. And he, he got his strength from God. Yeah. He knew yeah. where his strength came from. And then another David was, you know, him and, 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 um, uh, Bathsheba. Be, well, Bathsheba, you know, what a tragedy that was yes. when he looked upon Bathsheba, it changed his life. It changed his family's life. It led to murder. It led to uh, children of, of, of all kinds of pain right. and heartbreak just because he looked upon. And, and those are the life-changing moments we don't want. <laughs> we don't want those, but yet he is after God's own heart. That's right. David was a, a, a very special individual. Yes. And then when he was in the cave with uh, 
Saul. With Saul. And, you know, he cut off the part of his garment. He could have killed him there, yes. but he knew that Saul was appointed by God, yes. that, that he was not supposed to do that. And Saul was after him to kill him. Yeah. And so there's so much good stuff with, with David, that things that we can learn from David mm -hmm. um, and learn not to do too. Right, yes. right. But that's yes. for, for all of us. It is. And I think the grace and the mercy, right, that God showed to David. Yes. Yeah, yes, he was strong with that giant. He looked ridiculous, right? He he made a statement, you know, I'm going to stand against this giant. And people thought that that was ridiculous. With his slingshot, for heaven's sake. Yeah, yeah. really. And yeah. some stones. But we have also overwhelming giants. Sometimes we just have things we don't know what to do with. That's right. And... Mm -hmm. um, but you know what, Monica, it's those things that we learn from. Mm -hmm. We don't learn when we're on the mountaintops. Mm -hmm. It's only been through the hardships that I have learned mm -hmm. and, and been more pliable to God's desires and, mm -hmm. and instructions. Mm -hmm. During those times, during those hard times mm -hmm. that I might pick up a slingshot and look foolish. Right. Yes. And I would say same, right? On the mountaintop experiences of my life, while those are wonderful, they're usually fleeting. And we want to stay there. Well, I want to stay there, <laughs> but I don't learn so much. Yeah. But when, when there are giants, right, coming after me or coming after someone in my family or a friend, those are every bit as real as the giant that David faced. Yeah, they are. And I don't always think that I can get a slingshot and some <laughs> stones. And I don't even want to show up. I but know. I don't. But yet, that is an opportunity in that hardship isn't it, for a life-changing moment? It absolutely is. And those moments can change our life and those around us. And it's a ripple effect mm -hmm. that it goes on and on. Yeah. Yes. And I think that that's something good for us to remember because we can look at these trials and these hardships and these challenges as all about us. And certainly there are opportunities for us to learn and grow and change. But the ripple effect... Yes. like for generations to come, yes. Yes. for other people that are just, they just know us or they observe us and they see, oh my goodness, look what Sue is doing. Look at her. She's standing in faith when it looks ridiculous. <laughs> it does look ridiculous. <laughs> it? It, does. <laughs> it does. It does, right? Does. It, because faith is about what we can't see. Oh yeah. And it's our hope and our trust in the unseen. we can't do ourselves. Yes, that are too big for us. Because yeah. if it wasn't too big, right, it wouldn't take faith. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, we've got to take a break. Yes. I want you to stay with us here today on Bridges. When we come back, we're going to bring you more hope for the journey as we keep talking about life-changing moments. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter, and click subscribe. Once subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching Bridges. God's Word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, Sue McGray is my guest, and we are talking about life-changing moments. And Sue, I'm so glad that you could come and be with us today. Thank you, Monica. We've Thank been you trying for to me. do this forever. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and we were building this new set and redoing the studio, and it just took forever. Yes. yes. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. And I'm hoping today that as people uh, listen to this conversation, that they'll be encouraged about life-changing moments and how God really, even in the challenges and hardships and the unknowns in our life, He's working to bring good. He's working to bring life-changing moments. And tell us the title of your book. You did this as a whole project. Uh, yes, uh, Life-Changing Encounters and Divine Appointments. 
And I think that for me, you know, if I look back, how did I meet my spouse? How did I meet my best friend? I believe that God has a hand in that, yes. that he weaves together those things. And it doesn't look like it on the surface. A lot of times it's like, this is madness. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. How did I end up here? Yes. And yet something so good comes out of it. I've said that many times. How did a nice <laughs> Christian girl like me end up in a mess like this? <laughs> And you know, I don't always, even at the other side, understand all the reasons, no. but he brings good and he's changed me, right? He, there are some things that have happened that I, you know, I wouldn't wish on anybody, but on the other side, I've had more character. Yeah. I've had more yeah. understanding, more kind. Yeah. And uh, that's the whole point of this journey. And that's where we gain our strength and our, our character, if mm -hmm. you will. I wouldn't be anywhere close. I'm not perfect and I'm not there, but I'm a lot closer than I would have been had I not had some of those difficult times in my life where I know now that God was directing me. I didn't know it then. No. In the dark times, it's really difficult to yeah. know that. Yeah, I'm so glad that you said that because there are some times, honestly, Sue, I will just be absolutely surprised. Like I'll just do something, right? And it, then I'll understand that God has had his hand in it, but I didn't know it going into <laughs> yeah. it, right? That's and I so think, true. you know, well, should I have known that? But it's, I think God doesn't tell me all the time because I'd mess it up. He just lets me get there. And, and then he does what he does best, yeah. which yeah. is change our lives. Change and our us. lives, that's yeah. it. And we desperately need that changing. And we are, you know, we're God's hands, we're God's eyes. If we don't do it for our fellow man, it doesn't get done. That's right. So God has to use us mm -hmm. as human beings yeah. to reach out. If it's somebody at the grocery store, if it's somebody just in, in passing, then we're to, use, we're to be God's eyes and hands yes. and voice that we can say an encouraging word that maybe they haven't heard mm -hmm. in a while. Yeah. So, you know, I think that it's easy enough. And, and of course I do see the increased darkness in the world and I, I see the uncertainty, oh. and, you know, I don't live yes. in denial. I don't think he calls us to that. But at the same time, the Bible does say that the darkness will never extinguish the light. Yeah. And so I think instead of being so defeated by our own circumstances and our own challenges and just the absolute evil in the world, if we will understand he's still creating life-changing moments and that we're a part of that story, um, great joy is gonna to come to us and to others. Yes, yes, absolutely. He will use us if we'll be pliable yes. and we'll be willing mm -hmm. and willing to be out there sometimes when it looks like you're gonna fall off the cliff mm -hmm. that other people are saying, I wouldn't do what you're doing. Exactly. Or, or, yeah, and but he can use those he can. Fail, frailties and their uh, inabilities. He can use those things. Yes, well, he says, that in our weakness, his strength is made yes. perfect. Yeah. So a lot of times, right, we're going around trying to be strong, look strong, get strong, and nothing wrong with growing our faith, but at the same time, his strength is made perfect yeah. in my weakness. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the things that scare me the most, the things that I just think wouldn't have an idea, <laughs> right, of how to approach this situation, he can still help me through that. Mm -hmm. And, and All he does. things work together for the good, for Amen. those that are called. Yes. Those yes. So believers. you talked about Philip yes. in your book. So let's yes. talk about Philip. For well, just Philip a is kind of um, special to me mm -hmm. because I kind of put myself in Philip's place. He was told by the Holy Spirit to go down this certain road. It was a dusty road. It was not a road he intended to go down, mm -hmm. but yet have you ever just said, felt like the Spirit tells you, or you I have this feeling, mm -hmm. you're supposed to go mm -hmm. right instead of left, yes. And, yes. and you don't know why. So he was led down this dusty, dirty, dark road, had no idea what he was doing. That was not where he was going that day. And lo and behold, there was this chariot with, with the eunuch sitting there reading the scripture and he approaches him and said, do you know what you're reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone tells me, unless somebody helps me, how can I know? And so he explained the scriptures to him and, and he became a believer. Mm -hmm. And God had to have done that. There's no yeah. other way that Philip would have been 
at that place at that time, mm -hmm. sharing with someone he didn't even know. Uh, right after that, there was water. He said, what hinders me from being baptized? He was baptized. And then he's gone. <laughs> you know, he just disappears. It's like, where are you? Yeah. 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 So I know for a fact that that sometimes we are led down a road that we don't know what road we're going down. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. Uh, may I share a personal Absolutely. story? Absolutely, we'd love it. Well, I have um, a, a very fond memory of uh, several years ago, I was at a friend's house and I left a coat. Uh, it was a particular special coat and, and I called and said, I need to get my coat. And she said, I'll just take it to my church and leave it there at a certain place and you can pick it up. And, and so that's fine, that's closer, I can do that. So I walk into this sanctuary, to this church, and I can't tell you the, what overcame me. It, the Holy Spirit was so strong. It was like pulling me. Have you ever just felt pulled? Yes, I have. It's like yes. you have to do, you have, you don't know why, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. I just felt a deep desire to start attending church there. Hmm. We've been attending church somewhere else, but I just felt like this is where I need to be. So we started attending church there, and, and me and my daughter, who was eight or nine years old at the time, uh, we'd go on Wednesday night, we'd have supper, and she met a friend, and they became good friends. And my daughter and this friend, till this day, they've raised their children together mm -hmm. because I guess I was obedient and, and doing what yes. I felt that God told me to do. But we started going there, and, and so many years later, they are such good friends. They have grown together. They've had life together. But there's another caveat to that. Mm -hmm. I met my husband at, at that, that church. church. What are the chances that I would have ever met this man who moved from Nash from Orlando? His wife passed away. Mm -hmm. Him and his grown daughter uh, attended that church. A friend of mine invited me to do something with their uh, ch uh, class, their church group. And uh, I had no intentions of ever, ever, but God sent him to me. God sent him to Nashville for me. And why does God love me that much? I don't know. But had it all not started from way back, I would have never been at that right. church at that time. And he loves you that much because you're his daughter. Oh, he loves me that much. Yeah, and you're made in his image like we all he are. He does. But you think about that. <laughs> life-changing moment, it was with you forgetting a coat. I forgot a coat, <laughs> yeah. That's so, such a human thing, it, just yeah. forgot a coat. Right, and you know, was the coat at the church when you went there? Oh, yeah, I would have picked it? up the coat. Because I see, I think that's even strange to say, I'll take a coat and I'll leave it at a church. Yeah, yeah. If you it didn't go there. Strange. I didn't and go then, to church there. Then you were there. gonna walk in and you were gonna get the Hello, I'm looking for my coat, right? It's just weird. <laughs> yeah. But that God, you know, He really he does delight in so our details. so much into that, mm -hmm. into that those people at that time supported me and loved me through a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. and, and it was because I was there in that environment at that time. Yeah. 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 And then you would meet your husband there. I met my husband there. The, the person who introduced us, the couple that introduced us, one of the things that he said to me one day, he knowed me for a long, long time. He knew a lot about me. And he said, Sue, don't let what you've lived be wasted. And that ate at me and ate at me. It's like, what am I gonna do with this? And it's from that, that my first book was born. And of course, the second one, I said I'd never do a second one. <laughs> Don't ever say never. Right. But, you know, sometimes God used him for those words mm -hmm. to get me somewhere else. Yes. Not only to introduce me to my husband, but to say to me, very honestly, don't let what you've lived be wasted. I wonder how many times, Monica, that our life we've wasted so much of those lessons that we could have used. Right. Because it, the, the situation is maybe hard for us, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, painful. Oh, very painful. You mm -hmm. know, uh, sometimes we feel ashamed about things that, mm -hmm. that have happened or that we've let happen or choices that we've made. So we stop there, yeah. right? We just yeah. stop there and we just hold that all in and we think, well, I committed my life to Christ. 
I can go to heaven, this is it. <laughs> and yet there is that call not to let anything be wasted. And, and you know, we have, sometimes we use those bad things that just keep lingering on. And through my first book in writing that, uh, it, I became paralyzed. Mm -hmm. It was my journey. It was my truth. It was what I had lived. And so I would work on it for half a day, one day a week, and then go to bed mm -hmm. and cover my head because of the pain. But it was therapeutic. It was so, so such a growing time yes. to, to go through that and through my personal journey, yeah. which is there now. I, feel, I got a note today, this woman saying, I can so relate to your journey. That's so much of my story. Mm -hmm. So if God can use a little bit of that, just a little bit of my story yeah. to encourage somebody else, yeah. then it's well, well yeah. worthwhile. Because he is a God that nothing is ever wasted. No. I mean, even this morning in my devotions, it was about the, the loaves and the fishes, right? And they had the leftovers and Jesus said, collect them. I mean, <laughs> right? What's left collect over? Them. The leftovers. He didn't want anything wasted. Mm -hmm. And I hope that everybody that's watching today can say, you know, I may not like everything I've been through, may not like everything that's happened, but... I want to process it through because I don't mm -hmm. want it to be mm -hmm. wasted. Mm -hmm. And I can't help you through something that I haven't experienced. Exactly if right. I haven't walked it, I don't know. I've not lived through cancer. Right. I've not lived through so many things, but I can tell you about the things that I have lived exactly. through. We all can. Well, we are out of time, but thank you so much. Thank you so coming. much. Thank you, Monica. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back. Life can be hard and days can be long. So if you're looking for hope for the journey, monicaschmelter.com is a great place to get started. On monicaschmelter.com, you'll find Monica's teachings on demand. And if you're looking to really grow your faith, you'll find online extras are available with every teaching. So don't wait another day. Get started now at monicaschmelter.com and you will find hope for the journey. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter, and click subscribe. Once subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching Bridges. Today's hope for the journey has been about life changing moments. And I'm sure all of you, like me, live a pretty busy life, long to-do lists, places to go, things, all of that, work, all of that. And yet, it's so important for all of us to open up our eyes, to open up our hearts, and to pray, and to ask God to put people in our path that we might be able to share Christ, that we might be able to share a kind word, that we might be able to have a conversation that would build a relationship. We don't know whose life that we could be changing. What we do know is that God says he loves everybody and he wants none to perish. So if we align ourselves with God's word, with his will, open up our eyes and heart and look for people to which we can build a relationship and share the love of Christ. I'm out of time, but I'll be back again with more hope for the journey.